Hello and welcome back to the Canadian Money Roadmap Podcast. I'm your host, Evan Newfeld. Today, our episode is all about maximizing the value of your RSP. So if you are considering investing in an RSP, here are a few things that you should consider first to make sure that you can get the most bang for your buck. Thanks so much for joining me today. If this is the first time you're listening to the show, welcome. If you like episodes like this or content like this, feel free to subscribe and you'll get a new episode in your feed every week. Today's episode is all about the RSP and now we've kind of come out of RSP season as we call it here where you could still make a contribution for last year but when you're evaluating whether you should be investing in rsp at all here are a few things that you should consider first to make sure that you can get the most value out of that rsp contribution so item number one you want to make sure that you are in a high tax bracket today what does that mean and why does that matter okay so when you make an rsp contribution the idea is that you invest in a pre-tax way. However, most people that are employed, they actually have their tax taken off their paycheck before it actually comes to them. So there's no great way to actually invest in an RSP in a pre-tax way if you are traditionally employed. If you're self-employed, it's a different matter. But if you have a typical job where taxes are taken off your paycheck and you decide to make an RSP contribution on your own, what happens is that dollar amount, let's call it $1,000, It reduces your income when you file your taxes. And so whatever your marginal tax rate is, you'll get a refund based on that dollar amount. There's a little bit of jargon in there, so I apologize for that, but let's use a hypothetical example here. So in Ontario, if you make $100,000 this year, that puts you in the 33.89% tax bracket. So that means for every $1,000 you put into your RSP, you will create a refund of approximately $338.90. As you make more money, the way that our tax system works is that you pay more tax on the incremental dollars. Not on every dollar, but just on the incremental dollars. That's why we call it marginal. Marginal just refers to what you pay on the next dollar that you earn. So again, let's use just Ontario as an example. Say you made $250. That would put you in the top tax bracket in Ontario, and so that would be 53.53%. So that same thousand dollar contribution to an RSP in that case would generate a refund of not $338, but $535. So the first premise of an RSP is that if you're trying to get the most bang for your buck, if you are already in a high tax bracket, you are able to generate a larger refund or a larger benefit for making that contribution because you're able to eliminate more absolute dollars of tax by doing so. Now that leads me to point number two for trying to maximize the value of your RSP. Number one was make sure that you're in a high tax bracket today. Not necessarily high income, but a higher tax bracket than probably just that middle one that's right around the 30% mark. If you're making over 100,000, that's probably a good indicator. Every province is different. But number two here is you got to do something with that refund besides spending it. Sure, you can spend it, And the vast majority of people do. (laughs) But if you're looking to actually maximize the value of your RSP, you need to do something with it other than spend it. So let's walk through a few hypothetical scenarios here of something that you could do with your RSP refund. Okay, so let's talk about someone being in that middle tax bracket or the, uh, let's talk about someone in Saskatchewan who's making over $110,000. So here we have a pretty large bracket there. It's 38.5%. Let's say this person's making $125,000 and they want to make an RSP contribution. In their case, if they're making a $1,000 RSP contribution, they would generate a refund at tax time of $385. So if you spend that refund, $1,000 goes into your RSP and it's invested and let's use an average rate of return of 6%, just hypothetically. What happens is that $1,000 grows by 6% a year And then afterwards, when you want to take the money out, you have to pay tax on it on every dollar that you withdraw from the RSP. So let's assume that you contribute in the 38 and a half and you withdraw in the 33. So this is pretty standard assumption that people will make a little bit less money in retirement or have less taxable income in retirement. So you'd get a refund at first of $385. 
and that money goes towards your Mexico trip or whatever the case is. It's just lots of ways that you can spend money, <laughs> especially when it comes with the government. It feels better for some reason. But you have $1,000 in your RSP, you've spent the refund, and then 20 years later, your after-tax value, so even after you've paid tax on it, is over $2,000 in that case. So you've still doubled your money even after tax. It's a pretty good option. Okay, now what happens if you were to take that refund and invest it back into your RSP? Well, in that case, you wouldn't have $2,100. You'd have $2,929. You'd have just over $2,900. No, you wouldn't have got that initial 385 to spend on something, but the growth on the investment more than makes up for it. Now, here's where things get really interesting. Over a 20-year period of time, 6% growth ends up being the majority of the account value at the end of the day. So what would happen if that growth from your refund actually came from a tax-free savings account where you would get to keep all of that money? So hypothetically, in this instance, if you contribute that $1,000, you have a refund of 385 and you take that 385 and instead of putting it into your RSP, instead of spending it, you put that into your TFSA. Now we're really cooking. So in that case, you'd end up with an after-tax value in 20 years of $3,300. This is a really great way to maximize the value of your RSP because we also have the tool of the TFSA. So this is where they can kind of go hand in hand and really work to your advantage over the long term. So this would be my recommendation for the vast majority of what I would call super savers or people that are really trying to maximize their investment results, make sure that you can keep as much of your investment returns as possible. So if you're in a high tax bracket today, the RSP is a good tool to use, but you have to have the discipline to use that refund to also maximize the value. Sure, you can spend it, but that's not going to help you maximize your investment over the long period of time. If you have TFSA room and you're in a high tax bracket, I would recommend that the vast majority of people Get the refund that's attributable to your RSP contribution and put it into your TFSA and treat your TFSA like a tax-free retirement account. You can be invested the same way. You can have this the same assumed rate of return. All the investment options are exactly the same between the two. But think of your TFSA like a TFRA and use both account types to your advantage over the long term. Okay, number three, if you are looking to maximize the value of your RSP and you're trying to decide whether you should make an RSP contribution at all, first one, make sure you're in a high tax bracket today. Number two, you got to do something with your refund besides spend it. I would recommend you put that refund into your TFSA and let it grow. But number three, you got to be able to predict the future. I, I always tell people don't try to predict the future, but there's a number of things that can make an RSP really valuable if some of these things work in your favor. You don't have to try to really predict the future in terms of markets or rate of return or anything like that, but just a few personal circumstances that you can kind of look into your own life and see if they'd be applicable to you. So number one, if you have a spouse or if you anticipate having a spouse by the time you retire, using an RSP can be really valuable because after age 65, you can share your income that you have from your RSP with them. So 50% of it can be shared with your spouse. So if you're in a circumstance where one of you makes a much higher income than the other, using an RSP can be a great tool because in retirement, you can actually share your income and get into a lower marginal tax rate each, which then leads to, of course, a lower average tax rate each, paying less money towards your tax bill every year. So the ability to income split with RSPs can really increase the value of it, where in my hypothetical scenario where you contribute it at the 38.5% bracket, you withdrew in the 33, well, you might actually be able to withdraw somewhere closer to a 25 or a 27%, depending on your province, tax bracket if you're able to income split with a spouse. So if you're married or you have a common law partner, that is one advantage to using an RSP is the future ability to income split with them. Okay, another thing you can do for predicting the future is knowing how much you're going to spend. If you're a person that's really frugal today, the chances are you're probably going to be pretty frugal in retirement. If you're someone like myself that likes to spend money today, you're probably going to spend more in retirement. And those first few years, what I've noticed is that many people, when they first get into retirement, they're not just sitting around watching the weather on TV. 
Some people do, but a lot of people, they like to get out and they like to travel. And they like to spend time with their, their kids or grandkids and they might be all over the country. They might want to spend half the winter down in Palm Springs or Florida. That gets expensive. And if you're working, you wouldn't be doing that kind of thing. So knowing how you're going to spend in the future is kind of the million dollar question when it comes to the RSP, right? Because the opposite could be true in my example, where say you're already contributing in the middle tax bracket or a lower one, let's call it the 33. Well, if all of your money is in your RSP and you need to withdraw an extra 20 grand or whatever to go to on the trip to Australia, you might for a period of time actually end up in a higher tax bracket for a few years in retirement. Not likely the whole time, but it's possible that the RSP could work against you and you could end up paying more taxes. So this one is kind of silly, but kind of the only thing that matters is based on your spending behavior, are you more likely to be in a lower tax bracket in retirement? If you're in the same tax bracket, my strategy of reinvesting your refund in the TFSA can actually still work pretty well. The best way to maximize the value of your RSP is to contribute in a high bracket and withdraw in a low one. And the only way that you can end up in a lower one is if you end up spending less money. Many people will just by the fact that they're probably paid off their mortgage, kids are probably out of the house, some things like that. You're not saving for retirement anymore. So the the cash that you have on hand can be used more efficiently for just pure spending purposes as opposed to paying off debt and, and things like that. But that one's pretty critical. The third thing that you might want to try to predict the future on is the idea of what you might want to do with your money after you pass away. One of the issues that I see with RSPs or registered plans in general is that people who are super savers or people that invest a ton of money into their RSP, either through a workplace pension program or things like that too, those are people that live quite frugally. And so throughout retirement, they're not spending a lot of money. And so the RSP balances can get up quite high. If you have a spouse or a common law partner and you pass away, you can have your spouse named as a beneficiary on your RSP and it rolls over to them on a tax deferred basis. However, upon the second of your deaths, you can still name, say, your kids as beneficiaries of the plan. But in the year that you pass away, if you don't have a spouse to roll it over to, that money is treated as income in the year that you pass. So if you're thinking that you want to leave a lot of money to, say, charity or to your kids, keep in mind that future tax bill that can come all at once with an RSP. So this is kind of a unique scenario for people that are actually saving more than they have to or not spending as much as they could. If you're in this scenario, you might want to talk to a financial planner about how you can efficiently withdraw money in retirement. But the people that maximize their RSPs every single year might end up finding themselves in this situation where you actually have more money in your RSP than you think. File this under good problems, but it's something that you can start planning for when you get closer to retirement and structuring your income in such a way that you can withdraw it more efficiently while you're still alive to maximize the value for your kids or the charities or whoever you want to leave your money to at the end. The idea here is that you can leave your money to either kids, charity, or the government, but you can only pick two, <laughs> and uh, planning ahead can help prevent that last one from happening as much as, as possible. So to summarize here, if you are looking to maximize the value of an RSP contribution and you're deciding whether you should do it in the first place, the three things you want to consider, are you in a high tax bracket today? Two, What are you going to do with your refund? And number three, what are your predictions of the future? Are you going to have a spouse to be able to income split with? What are your spending habits? And what do you want to do in the case that you actually have more than enough to live on in retirement? All these scenarios and answers to these questions are unique to you. So take some time to figure it out for yourself instead of listening to more podcasts or YouTube videos or things like that in a generic way. This is where personal finance really gets personal. And uh, using an RSP is one of those situations where even though it has retirement in the name, it's not a blanket solution for those who are retirement savers. For some people, if you're not in a high tax bracket today, if you are going to spend your refund, if you don't have a spouse, if you are a big spender, all these different kind of things, TFSA can actually be the best tool for you. It's a lot of scenarios where the TFSA can be a great retirement savings account, but the RSP 
needs to be used correctly to be able to maximize it in the first place. So let me know what you think of this episode. My contact info, as always, is in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Canadian Money Roadmap Podcast. Any rates of return or investments discussed are historical or hypothetical and are intended to be used for educational purposes only. You should always consult with your financial, legal, and tax advisors before making changes to your financial plan. Evan Neufeld is a certified financial planner and registered investment fund advisor. Mutual funds and ETFs are provided by Sterling Mutuals, Inc.